Welcome to that 1870s homestead, guys. My name's Rachel, and I have never, not never, this year, I've not given you guys a proper garden tour at all. And it's just my life has been this way. Things have slowed down this month of July, briefly for a moment in time. So we're gonna what, do a quick walkthrough, and I'm just gonna show you what's growing, what everything looks like. You've seen pieces and parts of it, but this will just be a round robin because I'm about to do a big garden harvest. And before I get into that, let me just show you what I've got growing. Well, this is my tomato alley this year, growing in uh, in-ground no-till garden beds. Just deep litter, that's all I've ever done to these beds. And I've got basil interplanted, and I'll show you some of the tomatoes that are I've got planted. Some of them aren't ripe yet, so I don't quite know what they're gonna be, but we're gonna take a peek together. Oh, back up, back up. Look at these beauties. So these are mountain vineyards. I picked quite a few of them last night for my nephew that was here. Um, ooh, what, what do we got in here? This may be, it's either a Cherokee purple or, I think that's a Cherokee purple. This one, I don't remember what he is, but he, she's beautiful. It's like a pink color. I can't remember. Here's basil. So this is fun. You can see I had a lot of weed pressure this year. So I just did a lot of like pulling the grass up by the roots and flipping it up out of itself. And it's working pretty well. So now I have less to manage. Lots of beautiful, beautiful tomatoes though growing. Absolutely stunning. So lots of green ones, but all the way down. If you're new to my garden, I have strawberry and rhubarb planted against the fence row. That's pretty much done for the year. Let's head on over to the other side though and see what's growing in front of the tomatoes. So here's all my onions. Guys, I had such a heck of a time getting these to stay planted this year with um, the birds pulling them out. So they're a little bit behind where I'd like them to be, but I've got some nice baseball size onions. They still have a ways to go. Nothing's going to seed yet, so that's good. Come down here though and take a look at some of these sterlings. I'm just gonna pull one because I'm sure we need one for dinner. Yeah, nice, nice onion. So pretty soon I'll be out here harvesting. Oh yeah, there's some really beauties in here. I'll be harvesting some. We're gonna make some more caramelized onions to can and put up on the pantry. Oh, but look at just huge tomatoes. I've done a terrible this job this year, tying them all up and keeping them up, but we're gonna have a great tomato harvest. So I have three rows of corn. It's a sweet corn and it's a mix of like peaches and cream and then I think a Haas variety. It's just starting to tassel. Um, the little pollen drops are dropping and so far I haven't lost any to any big storms. But then again, we haven't had any big storms. So keep praying. I did hill my corn twice this year, hoping that it just helps that root um, system take have more to take hold on and I even have volunteer tomato plants over here growing from last year so I'm just letting them go and do their own thing see what they are all right in front of the corn I have not so great a pollination of my bush beans but here's look at that see I got to come out here and harvest we were gone to the cabin for about five days and I need to do a harvest on my bush beans and they run down probably half of this front row, just spotty germination, but they're doing really, really well. Here is a fun, fun bed. Uh, sweet potatoes, lots and lots of sweet potatoes. And my tip is keep those vines flipped back on themselves so that they don't rob energy from the mother plants. And in front of the sweet potatoes, Look at this beautiful celery. Three celery plants growing and they are loving it here. This was a complete experiment for me this year. They like really, really wet soil. So planting them at the base of the um, raised beds 
shades the root system a little bit and holds on to that moisture. Now just about all the sunflowers you're gonna see in my garden and they are gorgeous. I don't know if that one's in bloom, but Todd will get shots for you guys. I would say 98% of them I didn't even plant. They just came back from last year and they came back bigger and in different variations of yellows and creams and so beautiful. And uh, so I, I love that about nature, that it's just gonna give you in the perfect spots, all these beautiful things to just to bring joy to your garden. So I left them. This here is actually mustard that went to seed. And I haven't planted mustard in my garden for three years and every year it comes back in a different place for me. And uh, so I just let it do its thing and I get a couple random mustard plants every year. Second row of Beauregard sweet potatoes. That's the variety I grow. I know every year somebody asks me, if you're new to our channel, we are in Southeast Michigan, zone 6A, I think. 6A, yeah, and weed. And <clears throat> I was so surprised when I learned I could grow sweet potatoes in Michigan. And I grew all of these starts myself in the house starting in February, planted them out in late May. They take a while to get going, but boy, once they get going, they're the most beautiful plant. And all of these leaves are edible. So you can snip these off, saute them, eat them fresh in salads. Um, so how about that? Now, I was not gonna even plant any peppers this year. And I have so many faithful viewers that were like, Rachel, you are gonna regret it if you don't. And guys, once again, I'm gonna have so many peppers, which I'm really excited about. So banana peppers here, green peppers. There's jalapenos behind it. Uh, I'm not sure this is more green peppers, but guys, look at this banana pepper. That's crazy. We're gonna have to make some grilled stuffed peppers. Oh, what else do we got? More green peppers, more jalapenos. Not sure what this one's gonna be. It still just has flowers, so we'll let it do its thing. Come up to this one though. This one's very, very productive too. Jalapenos ready to be picked. Tons and tons of jalapenos. Would you like to see how bushy this plant is? So strong and healthy and I top my pepper plants to get more and more fruiting branches off of each pepper plant. More green peppers, nothing yet. More green peppers, some purple beauties. Uh, more purple beauties, more purple beauties. And back here, loads and loads and loads of cayenne peppers loads of cayenne peppers. So we're gonna be making salsas, freezing up lots of chopped peppers for the season and gonna be good to go. So also in this front bed, um, <clears throat> I thought I was planting bush beans here. They're not bush beans. I have no idea what they're gonna be. They haven't even started flowering yet. So there is random borage in here that just self-seeded, but I ended up transplanting some of my extra cucumbers in here. And I harvested probably six cucumbers out of here last night. Oh, wow. <laughs> Here's a really big one. I'll just show you. Look at that sucker. Almost too far gone, starting to yellow. But um, lots and lots of cucumbers coming off of these plants, just everywhere loaded. And I still have my main cucumber plot. So I kind of just took use of space of something growing that um, ended up not being what I needed. But let's head back to um, the beets and talk about the beet beds. Before we move on back to the back beet bed, let me talk about this. What is this crazy stuff? This is the Malabar spinach. It's a vining spinach that grows I don't know, somewhere hot, hot and tropical, I think. And it is delicious, guys. This is my first year growing. It really should be grown on a trellis, but it was kind of an afterthought when I planted it. So I'm just letting it creep and I'm picking it. And you just keep picking it. And then it grows similar to like something else that you would prune, like 
basil or peppers where if you find a leaf node, let me see if I can find one like right here. If I pick this pepper off, this is gonna grow a new stem and more leaves and it just keeps getting bigger and fuller. Um, and I've harvested probably three gallons of Malabar spinach in like freezer bags so far, which is far beyond anything I could have grown with standard spinach. And this variety is so great because it stays sweet, it stays crisp during the hottest of hot of the summer. So if you struggle growing with spinach in springtime or fall, having a long enough season like I do, this is definitely the solution I'll forever stick with. All right, in front of this is the same bed as that Malabar spinach. This is all my beets. We have golden beets and uh, Detroit red beets. I'm just gonna pull one because we are gonna be doing beets here soon. We have beets ready. So we're gonna be doing some beets here real soon, pickled beets. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite way. Todd and I both will eat it like three times a week, pickled beets. So lots of beets in here to harvest and a whole other bed of beets in front of us. So this bed is pretty much random. This, now the kale looks like it's getting eaten up right now by something, probably the cabbage moths, but this kale I did not plant. It's self-seeded, so I've done a lot of harvesting off of that. Lots of beets in here as well. Obviously, oddly, three random pumpkins. I do not know what they are. They're probably gonna be crossbred with pumpkins I grew last year, like my um, super moon and my uh, pie pumpkins. So that'll be interesting to try. And I, fun, um, oh, this one is another beautiful beet. I can't believe I grew beets this good this year, guys. I struggled growing beets, which I know is an, such an easy thing for some of you to grow, but I could never do it. Um, and then lots of volunteer little tomato plants in here. So we're just letting them go, see what they become. Now in here, I'm gonna just pull one, see how we're doing, yep. In here we have our carrot row, which ended up only being half as good as it should have been because the whole other end of this bed flooded. My peas are pretty much done. I can probably come in here and do one more good pea harvest. But after that, I'm gonna just pull out the pea trellis. That's two rows of peas. And I've put up probably two gallons of peas so far. So um, I'm gonna keep letting my carrots go a little bit longer. I like to let them get bigger than this. Just, um, I want to avoid them getting overly rooted and knotty. Um, so I'll just keep Pull in one here or there, see how they're doing. And when I think that they're good, I'll come through here and do a big carrot harvest. Nice, Todd, your favorite without the... Beautiful. Oh, nice. So lots of cucumbers in here, all different varieties. Pickling cucumbers, these, uh, I don't know what they're called. Mm, I don't know, they're Todd's favorite kind, not the pickled cucumbers, but I did see one in here I need to give to the pigs. It's too far gone. Um, and this is probably a four by four area of, uh, maybe four by three area of just cucumbers. I was left the one sunflower hoping that they'd be smart and they'd climb up the sunflower, but they didn't get the hint. So this is my zucchini plot. I have four zucchini plants in here. I picked um, a couple last night for my father-in-law while he was visiting, but I have zucchinis in here that are now the size of a large forearm that I need to come and get out of here. We usually just grate it up and then I have it in the freezer when I need to add it to meals or add to additional dishes. I have beautiful um, dill growing all in here, ready for my pickle season. So we're about to head over to the cabbage and take a peek underneath the tent. So the red cabbage is heading up really, really nicely in here. I have quite a few broccoli heads. Now I've already done my big broccoli harvest. So as long as I have time and I get out here before they go to, to flower too big, I can come out here and I've harvested quite a few um, small broccoli heads. But I'm trying to peek back and see if there's any green cabbage. Back here, I might've already harvested those. But ooh, yeah, that, those red cabbages are nice and firm. So I think it might even be, ooh, coleslaw season too. I'm gonna be busy. There's still some green cabbages back there, but I'm gonna let them go just a little bit longer. 
Lastly, it's our potatoes. We planted Kennebecs and uh, Norlands, I believe. And those are, they're coming close to being done. Not, not real done yet. Um, I just wait for my potato plants to die back. They're just a few of them are starting to yellow. So we'll just wait for them to completely die all the way back and then it'll be potato harvest season. So everything's just coming in, coming in slowly, one after each other. And I think I've shown you just about everything. I've got a couple pumpkins over in the far corner, some volunteer zucchini elsewhere in the garden, and my loofah and um, geet squash is growing up over the trellis. So yeah. Everything's going great. I just wanted to take time and get you guys in here in the garden with me and see it all before I come and start yanking stuff out because pretty soon that's what, what's going to happen. So thanks for coming in the garden and happy growing and gardening where you are.